One of the most iconic TV shows of all time is undoubtedly Hercules, The Legendary Journeys. With a star-studded cast consisting of Kevin Sorbo, Lucy Lawless, Bruce Campbell, Kevin Smith, and many more, the show was way ahead of its time. They took modern day problems and presented them in a strikingly palatable and humorous fashion. If you give it a rewatch, you might find that it's more clever and profound than you initially gave it credit for. Of course, the star of the show is Hercules, but he's not the only one. This show gave us villains that were so iconic that even today people commemorate these characters at conventions and other gatherings. But in a show that spans six seasons, there have to be several villains, right? That's right. But we at Marvelous Videos have picked out the top 15 villains out of all of them. So let's get to the list and see if you agree with us, shall we? Before we get into our explanation, we have a very small request. If you like our content, please support us by subscribing to our channel. This is a small click for you, but for us, it means a lot. Thank you. Let's begin. Hera. Hera, the Queen of Olympus, was the biggest villain that Hercules had to go against. This animosity was not because of something he did, though. You see, Hera was the wife of Zeus, and anyone who knows about Greek mythology knows that Zeus isn't very good at self-control. Whenever he sees someone pretty, he has to go hit on that person. He's had several affairs over the years, and if you want to simplify Greek mythology, pretty much every story can be traced back to his affairs at some point. One of his many flings happened to be Alcmene, Hercules' mortal mother. As Hera is the goddess of marriage, having her husband cheat on her was simply unexpected acceptable. Furthermore, as Alcmene was immortal, this affair with her irked Hera the most. As Zeus was the king of Olympus, she couldn't take revenge on him. Instead, she decided to take out her wrath on Hercules. Obviously, the easiest way to hurt a mother is to attack the child, so in a roundabout way, she was hell-bent on hurting Alcmene through her persecution of our protagonist. Since his birth, Hera had tried time and time again to hurt Hercules. When Zeus prevented her from directly hurting Hercules, she instead used her followers to hurt. For every type of misfortune that a man can suffer, Hera made sure Hercules went through it. Out of all the cruel things Hera did to Hercules over the years, perhaps the most cruel was the burning of his wife Dianera and their three children. Right in front of his eyes, Hera rained fireballs on his wife and children, wiping them out of existence in a moment. Her cruelty and her status as a goddess make her the most powerful, consistent villain that Hercules goes against. Hello, Xena! Oh, what's the matter? Ares! The god of war is a major villain of the series. He's the son of Zeus, making Hercules his half-brother. However, despite the relationship they shared, Ares felt nothing but hatred for his mortal half-brother. This hatred was caused by Zeus, since whenever given a choice between Ares and Hercules, he always preferred Hercules. This led to Ares feeling like he wasn't good enough. This feeling is something a lot of us can relate to, as parents favoring one child over another is quite common. The favoritism played a crucial role in Ares' need to destroy Hercules whenever he had the chance. Their rivalry was very much like that of siblings, and Hercules always ended up gaining the upper hand. Ares was obsessed with Hercules, but pretty much whenever he's scheming something, Hercules is in the center of it all. Being the god of war means that Ares is inherently violent. In the series, instead of being a mindless thug, he specifically worked as a strategist. He planned his battles out in excruciating detail. Instead of attacking Hercules directly, he made sure to use others because he knew that if he succeeded in killing Hercules, he'd be on the receiving end of his father's wrath. As Hercules always gained the upper hand, Ares kept coming back to hurt his half-brother over and over. Sorry. Dayhawk. There was a primitive god who ended up playing a villainous role in the life of Hercules. That character is Dayhawk. Dayhawk was called the One God, and rightfully so. He was there before any of the Olympian gods ever even came into existence. Back before mortals, gods, or even titans existed, the world was working on a fine balance between the impulse to destroy and the impulse to create. Dayhawk was the embodiment of the impulse to destroy. His major goal was to tip the balance between the two impulses to the extent that chaos reigned indefinitely. Although he didn't show up very often, whenever he did, he made sure to make things extremely difficult for our heroes. One of his most significant run-ins with Hercules was when he possessed Iolus' dead body to wreak havoc on Earth. This put Hercules in a tough spot as he'd have to hurt Iolus in order to banish Dayhawk again. This created an interesting challenge for Hercules, marking Dayhawk's prominence as a villain. You want it? 
Callisto. Hercules, The Legendary Journeys is set in a fictional ancient Greek time period. We say fictional as there were a few blends of the modern time era in with the time period they were trying to portray. However, one thing that was period accurate in the show was the prevalence of warlords. One of the major warlords who has shown up time and again to fight with Hercules is Callisto. Callisto is a ruthless warlord who is out for vengeance. Her main nemesis was Xena, another warlord, but that never stopped her from attacking Hercules. Throughout the years, Callisto made it a point to harm people mentally and physically, and Hercules was one of her many victims. When Callisto was killed off, her soul was sent straight to Tartarus. While there, she made a deal with Hera. Hera would return her to Earth for only one day, and Callisto's primary goal would be to kill off Hercules. If she managed to do it, then Hera would gift her with immortality, something that would help Callisto immensely. But one thing Hera wasn't counting on was Callisto's insubordination. See, Callisto had a rough childhood. She saw her parents slaughtered in front of her eyes like animals, and since then, all that kept her going was hatred. She was not going to do things at Hera's beck and call. She wanted to get immortality regardless of Hercules' death. So, Callisto poisoned Hercules' family. She knew that Hercules would do anything to save his family, and using that as leverage, Callisto forced Hercules to reveal the location of the Tree of Life. A bite of a golden apple from this mythical tree could easily cure any illness. What Callisto didn't tell Hercules was that eating an entire golden apple would give a person immortality. Even though Hercules was reluctant, he was forced to reveal the location of this Tree of Life. Callisto trapped Hercules there and ate one entire golden apple. It took effect immediately and she was cured of her insanity. Hercules escaped her trap and got in a fight with her where he scarred her, breaking her sanity again. This gave him the upper hand he needed to trap her in the labyrinth and save himself. Callisto is cruel, ruthless, and bloodthirsty. She's willing to go to any lengths to make sure that she gets what whatever she wants, making her quite the challenging force to go against. Her rage fueled her to take steps that no other villain has done, such as trying to defy a god, and that's what's so unique. Discord. Even for a big mythology fan, the name Discord is unfamiliar. This is because she's a minor goddess. However, in the Hercules The Legendary Journeys series, she was given the recognition she deserved. Discord was seen referring to Aphrodite as a sister, which means she is also one of the many, many children of Zeus. She is repeatedly seen helping Ares in his plans to thwart Hercules. While Discord was not super popular as a goddess, she did her job rather well. She was always seen creating some sort of conflict between people, whether it was helping the return of Dehawk, the one god, or by generally being a nuisance to Hercules. Discord had the ability to plant hatred and conflict between two people, and boy oh boy did she use this power generously. Whenever she's around, our boy Hercules is having a difficult time. But Hercules usually gains the upper hand, and it's rare that he suffered any real suffering at her hands. Strike! But Discord wasn't the only minor goddess going after Hercules. Ares had more than one lackey he'd send out after the legendary hero, and one such henchman come sibling of Ares was Strife, the god of conflict. He too was a minor god that would often join hands with his uncle Ares, much like Discord, and it was at one point revealed that if Ares were to die or become mortal, then Strife would have been the one to take the seat of god of war. As Discord was also generally a good candidate for this position, Strife would often battle with Discord over this fact. Strife had attacked Hercules since he was a teenager. Despite his losses at the hands of young Hercules, Strife always showed up with new plans and schemes to defeat our hero. Strife, as the god of skirmish, often took the form of a mortal to make things easier for him. A memorable event orchestrated by Strife was when he pretended to be a villager and stirred up an entire crowd against the last golden hind, knowing very well that Hercules was in love with him. At one point, he even lured Hercules' child, Iasin, to Tartarus, where he left the boy chained and used him to torment Hercules. But these are all small achievements in Strife's roster. His big biggest accomplishment was killing Serena, the Golden High, and he didn't even use his hands to murder her. Strife used Morpheus to get into Hercules' dream, and there, he messed up Hercules so bad that Hercules attacked Serena under the influence of that dream. Hercules decided to go back in time to save Serena using the Chrono Stone. However, when Strife learned about it, he decided to attack Hercules with an arrow that was drenched in the blood of the Golden High. This blood had the property to kill gods, so without a doubt the blood affected Hercules very badly, as Strife was almost going to claim his life as another trophy, but that didn't happen, as Serena was nearby and was able to neutralize the effect of the blood on Hercules. Strife ended up dying at the hands of Callisto, who stabbed him with Hind's blood dagger. Xerxos one of the most evil villains that Hercules ever faced off against was Xerxos. 
Xerxes was only 16 when he killed his parents. He was taken into custody and thrown in jail, but that jail wasn't strong enough to keep him captive and he broke out soon after. Hercules was the one who brought him back to be executed. But Xerxes was so evil that even Hades decided to send his soul directly to hell out of fear that his soul would cause disbalance in Tartarus. But then Xerxes escaped from hell and murdered two people. He even left one of the dead bodies with the note, I enjoyed it, showcasing just how far gone he truly was. Then we learn that Xerxes is a being of power and is becoming almost as powerful as a god. Turns out, Xerxes is the long lost brother of Arsiana, who was at the Temple of Hera. Mephistopheles gave Xerxes the power to overpower Hercules and kill him. If he succeeded, then Xerxes would be allowed to go and meet his sister on Asia. While the brotherly sentiments of Xerxes humanize him, there's no denying that as an arch demon under Mephistopheles' control, he's a strong opponent. He showed up at the temple where Arsiana was, and there, Hercules and he engaged in battle. Hercules Hercules almost murdered Xerxes, but at the last minute, he chose not to. Mephistopheles finally brought Xerxes back into hell, and that's where he stayed. Put her down! Hercules! Echidna! Anyone who calls themselves a fan of mythology is probably familiar with this name. Echidna, also called the mother of all monsters, is the wife of the giant Typhon. She's the mother of all the monsters that Hercules faces off against, such as the Lernaean Hydra, She-Demon, Stymphalian Bird, Cerberus, and even Obi. You might think all her kids were born evil, but that's far from the truth. None of them were born evil, but once they taste blood, they turned evil. Queen Hera often exploited this. She turned Echidna's children into monsters and sent them after Hercules, even though Echidna didn't want this. When she heard the news of her children's death, understandably, she was pretty distraught. She blamed Hercules for their deaths and decided to punish him. So Echidna asked for the help of Demetrius, a manipulative mercenary. Together, they planned out a trap to kill Hercules. Demetrius pretended to be in a relationship with Hercules' mother, Alcmene, and kidnapped her when the time was right. Hercules went after them to save her, and there, he came face to face with the mother of all monsters. Hercules killed Demetrius and, on his mother's earnest request, chose to spare Echidna. He simply locked her in the cave. After a few years, Macius, Demetrius' older brother, freed Echidna with the help of Hera. He wanted to take revenge on Hercules for killing his brother, and Echidna's help would be crucial for his victory. At first, Echidna agreed to help them out. However, when Hercules saved Typhon from Tartarus, where he was kept for the last century, Echidna chose to forgive Hercules once and for all. In the battle where she faced off against Hercules with Macius, Echidna accidentally killed Macius saving Hercules. Echidna ended up becoming more of a friend to Alcmene, who even invited her to her wedding to King Jason. Despite her introduction as a villain, Echidna ended up becoming sort of an ally for our hero, which we are very happy about. Give them nothing. I say we attack now, wipe them all out. Darphus and Grigus. Darphus was a loyal lieutenant of Xena, the warlord with whom Callisto often got into fights. Darphus was much more bloodthirsty than Xena ever was. Whenever he was in charge of an attack, there was a vicious bloodbath that followed. When he attacked the villages in the Parthian provinces, he made sure to order his men to spare no one, not even the children. This was something that Xena found distasteful. When she confronted him, he had her exiled. Later, he was killed by her in another encounter. But Darphus wasn't going to remain dead. The Blue Priest, acting under Ares's order, resurrected Darphus and gave him the task to kill Hercules. The lieutenant knew that he would not be able to kill Hercules on his own, so he got some outside help. This help was in the form of Grigus. Grigus, the dog of war, was Ares's favorite pet. To kill Hercules, Darphus borrowed Grigus from Ares. Darphus made Grigus grow bigger in size by feeding him more and more prisoners that he had captured. The more prisoners Grigus ate, the bigger he became. Dreyfus's main plan was that at one point, Grigus would be so big that not only would he help him defeat Hercules, but also take over the world. However, that plan didn't work out. Xena teamed up with Hercules and defeated Darphus. Xena basically kicked Darphus into the way of Grigus, and while Grigus ate him, the hell dog burst into flames, effectively killing both birds with one stone. While these two showed up in only one episode, titled The Unchained Heart, the dynamic of this villainous duo was so interesting that we decided we'd put him on the list. The Blue Priest the Blue Priest, who kind of looks like Lord Voldemort with a nose and a blue filter on, happens to be one of Hera's trusted servants. Hera used the Blue Priest on several occasions to cause misfortune in Hercules' life. Hera asked Dianera of Troy to be sacrificed to her. Dianera's father, King Illus, was unable to sacrifice his daughter, so Hera sent the Blue Priest to prevent Hercules from interfering with her plans and prevent him from showing up in Troy. However, that didn't end up working because the Blue Priest and Hercules engaged in serious combat. Hercules 
beheaded him and became the winner. The Blue Priest returned again, now under the command of Ares, who had resurrected him. He gave Darfus control over Grigus, hoping this time they'd be able to kill Hercules, and we know how that turned out. The Blue Priest also tried to ruin Alcmene's wedding with King Jason. He sent a giant sea serpent to swallow Hercules and Jason, along with a group of mercenaries, to kill off everyone else. However, his plan didn't work as Hercules and Jason cut their way out of the serpent. The Argonauts, along with Alcmene, were able to defeat the mercenaries too. This led to the Blue Priest running away to save his life. He jumped off a cliff, hoping that his goddess Hera would save him. But no, the Queen of Olympus was not willing to forgive another mistake on his end as the man fell to his death, never to be seen again. Hala and Soraya. These two girls were teenage witches who were good friends with the goddess Discord. Hercules had a stepsister named Seska, and Seska often felt lost after graduating from Chiron's academy. So, as a big brother, Hercules wanted to give his sister some direction in life. However, before he could talk to her, Hala and Soraya befriended her under the instructions of Discord. Together, the two girls turned Seska into another witch. Hala, on meeting Hercules, developed a crush on him and wanted him to flirt back with her. When Hercules refused pretty much all of her advances, she decided to take things up a notch. She used the book that Discord had given them to call upon the first warlock named Nebros. If Nebros was released, the whole world would be in big trouble. So Hercules had no other choice but to join hands with Discord in the hopes that he could stop the teenage witch from making a grave mistake. The witch, however, was adamant. She released Nebros from his century-old confinement, and now that he was out, he possessed her body and fought with Hercules. Lucky for everyone, Hercules was able to defeat Nebros easily, and the danger was thwarted. Between this duo, Hala is the main mastermind. Soraya is more the silly friend who tags along with whatever bad idea Hala has because she doesn't know any better. But when Soraya noticed that Hala was going down the path of evil, she switched teams super fast and decided to help Hercules and Seska defeat Hala. Powerless against us, old man. Arthur's under my protection now. Mab! Don't think that just because her name sounds rather silly and harmless that Mab would live up to that. She is, in fact, a force to be reckoned with. Mab is a prominent wizard who lived in the time of Great Arthur and was a student of Merlin. Whenever Arthur leaned more into his darker side and became tyrannical, while Merlin wasn't too happy about it, Mab found it rather exciting. She wanted nothing more than to watch Arthur fully commit to the tyrannical king that he could be. So you can understand her delight when she learned that Arthur was going to claim the mighty sword Excalibur. Hence, she tagged along with him, hoping to see Arthur take the sword and use it to become the tyrant king of her dreams. However, instead of that, she ended up trapped in the time-traveling spell that Merlin had cast around the sword. This spell transported her back in time but helped her retain her memory. So, Mab took Arthur to the Lady of the Lake, who prophesied that Arthur would become the wielder of the mighty sword. Then Mab used him to seize the sword from her. Her plan was to kill off the young Merlin before he could become the greatest wizard of all time that we know him as. Arthur, realizing what trouble he was in, asks Hercules and Morgan for help. They both happily helped him become a better person. Mab, on the other hand, was defeated by Merlin, who, despite his young age, was still an extremely gifted wizard. He easily overpowered Mab and eradicated her, giving us the legacy of Merlin and Arthur as we know it today. So prove it. Voluptua. In the kingdom of mid -Asius, there was a lady. While she might not have been the prettiest girl in town, there was something in her that made her stand out from the crowd. Her beauty lay in her intelligence. Meet Voluptua, the greatest con artist of all time. She and her little helper, Sigalus, worked together to manipulate King Midas into opening a gambling center in the kingdom. The gambling center was called the Touch of Gold. King Midas was completely powerless against the treacherous Voluptua. He ended up becoming a mere greeter at the door of this gambling palace, while his daughter was forced to act as a stripper. However, things weren't quite like that. You see, Voluptua wanted to get rid of King Midas from the throne. She wanted to kill the king and make Sigalus marry Princess Flaxen, making him the ruler. It was clear that even though he would be the one on the throne, the real ruler would have been Voluptua, owing wit. When she saw Hercules and his heroism, Voluptua wanted him to be one of the many entertainers of the Golden Touch, but Hercules would rather be a hero, so he refused. Soon after, her plot to kill the king unfolded, and Hercules played a crucial role in capturing her. When King Midas found out about Voluptua's reality, he sent her and Sigalus to plow the fields. While she may not have been dangerous in the sense of violence, with Voluptua, we get to witness the danger of having a cunning mastermind. Voluptua almost ended up getting everything that she wanted because of how deviously clever she was. All good things... Kernanos. 
Kernanos was a Celtic god. He severely hated the Druids, the powerful sect that was almost as powerful as gods because of their control over spiritual energies. He thought of the Druids as a threat, something that would terrorize the faith against Celtic gods. So, he employed an extremely powerful demigod known as Morrigan to hunt Druids. Kernanos was a sinister man. He made Morrigan addicted and dependent on drinking his blood. This affected her body in a similar way that narcotics affect our bodies. Not only that, he kept their daughter, Bridget, hostage, using her as leverage over Morrigan in case she tried to defy him. When Iolus died, Hercules went to Iyer, where he came across Morrigan. Hercules worked tirelessly to free Morrigan and then helped her transform herself into a druid, much to Kernanos's chagrin. Then, Hercules saved Bridget from the clutches of Kernanos and eventually defeated him. Adding a Celtic god to the rogues gallery was an interesting choice for the writers of Hercules' The Legendary Journeys. <laughs> Zena. Finally, we have Xena. Yes, that's Xena from Xena Warrior Princess. When she was first introduced in the series, she was introduced as this bloodthirsty warlord. With her unique acrobatic skills and her deadly chakram, Xena was an extremely dangerous villain that Hercules was forced to fight. Xena wanted to be the ruler of Arcadia, and she knew that this wasn't going to happen if the demigod was her opponent. Instead, she concocted a plan where she seduced Iolus to fall in love with her. Once she had Iolus under her control, she poisoned him against Hercules, driving a wedge between the two friends and effectively tearing them apart. Things were going according to her plan, but at one point, Iolus realized what she was doing and left her to join hands with Hercules. This is where Darfus killed men and women, as we mentioned before, which led to Xena being exiled. In her exile, she ended up running into Hercules at once. She fights with him against Darfus and kills him in this encounter. From here, we get to see her character go through an amazing change of heart a beautiful character growth that led to Xena becoming a fan favorite for many people. From then on, Xena became Hercules' loyal companion. And when Iolus saw her, he was pretty cheesed. When he noticed Hercules and Xena developing feelings for each other, Iolus told his bro to watch his back. However, Iolus's fears never came to fruition because Xena was actually a changed woman. However, instead of staying with Hercules, Xena went on her separate adventure to right all the wrongs she had done over the years. If you're curious about her journey, might I suggest watching her spin-off show, Xena Warrior Princess. Marvelous Verdict Hercules, The Legendary Journeys was so iconic that we got to admit there are several other villains that maybe should have been on this list. However, these 15 seem to be the most notable out of all of them to us. Do you agree with the list or is there somebody else you wanted to see? Let us know in the comments down below. We'd love to hear you out and maybe even do a video on some of those characters. Personally speaking, it's hard to pick a favorite out of these villains, but I gotta say, I've got a soft spot for Callisto. Yes, she's crazy and a bit of a sociopath, and she's done quite a few terrible things to get whatever she wanted, but at the same time, Hudson Leic plays her in such an incredible way that I can't help but support her wrongs, if only to observe her character more throughout the series. That's all for today, but if you liked our content, don't forget to leave a like and subscribe to us if you haven't already. Thanks for watching, stay safe out there, and have a marvelous day.